Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Today we're talking about the silver linings of this pandemic summer for us and our listeners. Join us as we share what's different, what we're appreciating, and what it will take for this summer to be declared a success. Let's get started. Hi, Mindy. Hey, Marie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Marie. It is summer. We are recording this on July 1st. Can you guys believe it? No, I still feel like we're back in March. I know. (laughs) It's so weird. It really is. But it is July. And listeners, we thought we would take today to do a check-in with each other and you guys on what it's like to be living in this pandemic summer. How does this year look different for you and us? What are some silver linings? What are we doing to create a summer to remember, even though there are aspects that we'd all like to forget? So I'm so interested to hear what you guys have to say. And later in the episode, we have some messages that people sent us on Instagram. And we also have some voicemails that people sent us that we want to play. But before we start with all of that, Julie and Mindy, let's just find out what's new in your life for this season. So we actually haven't talked to each other in a couple of weeks because mm-hmm. I was on vacation and Julie was on vacation. So this is a genuine update for the, all the three of us, too. So yes. let's see who wants to go first. All right. Well, I'll jump in. I've got some big news. We are moving. <gasps> <gasps> Yes. <laughs> Where? Back to Knoxville. What? <laughs> Mindy. <laughs> this is quite the place to make a, such a big announcement. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm thankful. This is probably the most exciting announcement that I could make. The biggest change in our lives this summer, especially considering this season that we're coming out of, of being so isolated we are all very excited to be moving back to Tennessee, essentially our home. So I will just be a couple hours down the road from you girls. Oh yes, my so much goodness. <laughs> you know, I think the last time we saw the three of us in person was when we had like pictures taken for our website. Yes. So yes. it has We're been have a to while. Those. Yes, we'll have to update our pictures and it'll be so much easier now. <laughs> Yes. I'm so thrilled for you guys. So how has this come about in just the short time period since we last talked? Wow. Things have happened so fast. I would have to say, though, that it's it's been a long time coming. It's been something that Bryce and I have been um, contemplating over the past five years. Just, you know, where do we want to end up in life? Our kids are starting to leave home and we're asking ourselves a lot of questions, you know, um, where do we want to be? Where do we want to grow our grandchildren? Where do we want to just be through retirement? And we're just, we're looking at life through a different lens than ever before. And so this has come out of many conversations, um, of wanting to more choose where we want to live than not necessarily always following the job. Mm. It is a choice. It's a place we want to be. It's our heart's desire. Our whole family would say the same thing. And so I feel like we are answering a call that we have wanted to be there the entire time. Mm -hmm. And both of your older kids are attending school near there. Yes. Both of our older kids now live there and we may have an upcoming wedding in the next few years. Um, We only have two kids left at home, high school and middle school. And we just, especially with the pandemic, it really brought things to a head for us to say, what's really important in our lives? Where do we want to be? Who do we want to be around? And the simplicity of leave of living just really brought it to a head where we wanted to be. Mm. And that's Tennessee. Wow. Well, well we're awesome. so excited to have you back. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. It's, it's an answer to a dream, an answer to a prayer, and just praying the Lord make that road very straight and smooth and easy at this point. Have you, has your house already sold? All right. So praise the <laughs> Lord. Um, I could go into this story um, more in depth, but Basically, it sold the same day we listed it, oh. and 
we had two offers by the end of the day. I only had to have the house clean for one full day and then we got to just keep living. So oh essentially goodness. right now over the next couple of weeks, um, it's sold. We're just chillaxing and waiting to move. <laughs> Oh. All right, we should not go this long without talking again because <laughs> big things can obviously happen. <laughs> Three whole weeks. I know. Like all of life changed. <laughs> I know. And well, isn't that just how 2020 is? You look back oh, yeah. three weeks and you're like, oh my goodness, that was another world. <laughs> yes, it feels that so way. So you're just in keeping with the times, Mindy. I know. Let's just sift through all of life and change everything. (laughs) Oh, well, Julie and I are so excited to hear this news and we can't wait for you to be back in town. Listeners, as soon as all of the three of us can be together in person, we will be sure and take a picture and let you know about it. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Well, I am dying to hear what's going on with you girls. Well, Julie, can you follow that? (laughs) <laughs> or top it can you top it <laughs> can't top it uh nothing nearly as exciting as that is happening over here um i really would say that zero is happening over here <laughs> <laughs> which but i think since, is the case in a lot of places <laughs> yeah yeah but since i have talked to you guys last the, one of the reasons that we could record one week is because we were supposed to be on a vacation in colorado with all seven of us all our kids and their spouses were going, and we were we had just picked a place in the mountains to hang out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Colorado wasn't open at that time, so we had to cancel. And I know everyone was disappointed to miss out on beautiful Colorado, but my mom's heart was secretly excited because <laughs> they all came here. Oh, fun. So I got to have my grandson in my house for the first time and just have a week of kind of normal life, which is what I want with him, like just to see him right. every day and, mm-hmm. um, you know, get to feed him and put him to, to bed and read him stories and things like that. So we kind of had a staycation here. And it also turns out that since the trip was planned and the time that we were supposed to go, my older son had gotten a new job and was not going to be able to go anyway. So this way we really were able to all be together, not the way that we thought, but it was, it was really, really nice. And we just spent a lot of time on the porch and eating and reading and crafting and walking and swimming. Uh Uh-huh. That's wonderful. You know, just, it was really, really nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm so glad you guys got to do that. Yeah, we didn't uh, record last week because I was on vacation. So it was like Julie was on vacation, then I was on vacation. And we had a great time because due to the coronavirus, we got like half off on a place in Florida. So we got to stay like super close to the beach, which we don't normally get to do. Um, We took everybody. It was big enough for everybody to sleep on a bed. Usually we have some people on air (laughs) mattress, some people on a sofa (laughs) bed. You know, it was like, oh, we actually have a bed for you this time. But it was awesome. You know, beach vacations are the perfect social distancing types of vacation because you really only see the people you're with and then the people at the grocery store. So it was so fun. We did get to take our little granddaughter with us and she's only three months old, but she did great. And my daughter (laughs) took a ton of pictures and we all had a really great time. So that's why I wasn't around. And that's something that was keeping me busy preparing for, then doing. Now my kids that are at home are like, oh, what are we going to look forward to? There's nothing on the calendar. (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) I know, guys, I sympathize. I sympathize. I know. (laughs) Wow, I'm dreaming of going to the beach. You said it was half off. I'm like, I'm booking it now, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> well, another new thing that's going on in my life, you guys, my girls tomorrow might be licensed drivers. My last <gasps> two. And oh I don't goodness. know whether to cheer or cry because... <laughs> One, I am just deathly afraid. I don't know. I mean, I've gotten, it's funny because I've gotten steadily more afraid of each child that's driven rather than like with my first. And I think for a lot of people, it's the exact opposite. But for some reason, I feel like they've been less and less prepared almost. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, they're already past due because, co- of course, COVID had shut down the DMV. So they're already past due getting their license. They've been waiting for this appointment. But yes, I'm going to have two more licensed drivers. And well, well that might have something two. to do with it that you have two new ones at the same time. True. Two new drivers. 
Yes, yeah. I have double the liability of new yeah. drivers on my insurance. <laughs> I and... can't imagine the insurance. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't have twin boys. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> so that's another new thing in our lives. So how else is this summer looking different for you guys? Just in general, you know, I think when we've done seasonal podcasts, we look at a new season as a restart or a clean break from the old way of doing things into something new. And this is so weird because I just feel like here it is July and I don't even in some ways feel like summer started. We just kind of slid into it. There was no end of the year parties, no no celebrations, no graduations. Mm-hmm. Not that I would have even been involved in those, but still there just wasn't a clean break. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we're just kind of doing more of the same. Mm-hmm. Right. And that makes it really weird. And it's like, Normally by July 4th, we'd start to think, oh, the summer's coming to an end, but we really don't even know when will it, it'll end. I right. Know. Right. I know. <laughs> you know, and it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like summer is as much of a celebration this year. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, like we didn't do anything for Memorial Day. I don't think we're doing anything for the 4th. Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely less social for sure. Yeah. Right. For us, like we had a lot of... um major milestones in my son Grant's life and they all happened within one week and then it was over like he turned 18 he graduated from high school virtually Mm -hmm. we we held a little ceremony in our front foyer that my husband put together and it was really sweet and then he we moved him down to Tennessee Mm -hmm. and so he is he's been out of our home for about a month and um, literally, when we moved him down, that was essentially our family vacation. Mm. And it turned out to be just the best vacation. I could have never um, planned it this way. But basically, we got we got to see friends. We got to meet up with a bunch of my family in South Georgia. Um, so we just made a big loop between Tennessee and Georgia. And then we came back up. And it was just, we all said that was one of our favorite trips ever, but oh, good. felt like an old woman where I was like, Oh, my heart is so full. We have all of our family <laughs> together. And I was like, yeah, that was me. Like I, I walked into my Mima's house and like my eyes got teary, you know, mm. we haven't seen this family. We've been so distant, so disconnected for such a long time that for us to be together, literally filled my heart with joy. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this summer is so different because some community pools have opened up, but not the one that we are usually a part of. Um, so like my girls bought swimsuits. I bought swimsuits. I right. worn my swimsuit at the beach last week and I may not wear it again. I mean, it's so weird that there's no swimming. Uh, mm-hmm. No camps. I think I've said in last summer episode that I usually try to have like a week at home, then a week we make sure people are busy, then a week at home. There's nothing to have people be busy with. Like you can't <laughs> sign up for anything. Right. Um, there's no sports. There's no real like youth group activities. There's just not anything going on. My girls, you know, they have jobs like at grocery stores and they are doing those. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet, and that is different. Uh Yeah. You mentioned buying a bathing suit. I was thinking, you know, every season I usually buy a few new clothes, add them to my wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Right. I bought nothing. It's so weird. I think about, like, the other night we got invited to a graduation party. So... I'm looking through my closet, um, you know, trying to decide what to wear. And I thought, wow, I haven't even done this in four months. I've not considered what to wear because I've been in my super soft REI joggers for four yes. months. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I had to peel those off and I put on a dress and some cute shoes and jewelry. I put makeup Ooh. on and I went Ooh. to this party and you kind of forget how much you miss just simple things like that. Like we mm-hmm. just sat in chairs, spread out in the backyard and talked for hours with these old friends, you know? Yeah. And it was just nice to actually have some place to go and to yes. have a reason to kind of dress in something other than joggers. I know. Right. I'm jealous <laughs> of people that have a reason to dress up and I'm not even talking about like a lot, maybe just like right. a little dressier blouse, like just yeah, something well. other than a t-shirt. 
All right. Well, let's get to some of our silver linings. Like, mm-hmm. what have we kind of found? You know, yes, this summer's different, but what have we found that's good? Go this ahead. summer kind of reminds me of a card that a friend sent me uh, years ago, and I've held on to it. And it's this black and white turn of the century picture of a woman in one of those like bathing suits that are the long pantaloons and you know Mm -hmm. and she's Mm -hmm. looking out standing on a rock looking out over the ocean with her hands over her eyes and she says the caption reads um what i'm looking for is a blessing not in disguise (laughs) (laughs) and i just thought that was so funny and you know before anybody uh gives me any grief i know i have a ton of blessings in my life to be grateful for but i think what that card means to me is just that it is exhausting sometimes to stay in a perpetual state of looking for the silver linings. You know, like that gets exhausting mm-hmm. that you have to kind of put a spin on everything to like, okay, this is bad, but how can I turn it into something good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's been what the summer has been about. Yes. I think that as women, that kind of falls on us too, like as the mom. It falls on us to be the spinners because every time there's a new disappointment, our kids look mm-hmm. to us like, well, what's mm-hmm. she going to say about it? Or what, how can she help? Or what can be changed? And right. and that part is exhausting, too. It yeah. is exhausting. I, I think I really appreciate you saying that because that's how I feel. I feel tired. I feel tired of trying to create something new, <laughs> trying to help everyone feel great about what's happening. I'm like, I hate it. I'm like, I'm ready to get out and go do stuff. Um, but I have like one of the silver linings in my own life has been, um, journaling, having a slower start to the day. And so I mentioned earlier that I was going to try to journal this year. It's really picked up during the pandemic that basically, um, out of necessity to look for (laughs) the silver lining, I've Mm. started writing down my praises every morning. I love now how I start my day. I would have never done that before had I not been shut off from the world. You know, I wouldn't have chosen it. But now that I'm doing it, I can't imagine going back. But being able to start the day with my coffee, myself, and writing down my praises, and then just reading the word and looking for the Lord to work and move and change my attitude and help me to see him and the things that he's doing has given me a new set of eyes. So that has been a huge silver lining is just the continuation of slowing down and prioritizing the things that are really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that we've all really been conscious of the things that are really important during this time, you know, either we're missing them or we're getting more of them. But either way, we're very conscious of them. A funny little silver lining that my daughter told me last night. Okay, so one of the things I love about this podcast is that my adult children listen. And I feel like they get to hear me in a different way. But my twin girls who are my youngest, they've refused. They wouldn't even listen when their siblings were on. Like, I think they must have that secondhand embarrassing feeling like, oh, my mom, I'm so embarrassed for her. Like, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so anyways, one of my daughters has a job this summer where you can listen to something while you do it. So she said, Mom, I just finished all of the episodes of Midlife Matters. I said, (laughs) you did? She goes, yes, I listened to like five a day. She goes, what am I going to listen to now? (laughs) Wow. And I thought that is so cool because, you know, I love that she's been able to hear and um, see me kind of in a different context than she would just as her mom around the house. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for the pandemic and... The fact that my kids have literally been sunk to the lowest amounts of boredom, or not the highest amounts of boredom, I guess, that they would actually turn to my podcast to entertain themselves, she would have never listened. (laughs) It only took five months of lockdown, but that's (laughs) (laughs) So that's just kind of a funny silver lining that I really, really loved. That is funny. My boys have still not gotten their marine. They're not that bored yet. (laughs) No, I think it would take another five months for my younger boys. (laughs) (laughs) One of the things, you know, if you know about me, you know, I love to travel and we've had to cancel several vacations, 
But back in May, John had some time off and we weren't going to go anywhere. And we really didn't know if we could go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And our youngest son, who still lives at home, said, why don't we go to Zion National Park? I think it's opening up. And so we kind of looked at each other and said, okay. (laughs) Uh And so we got out, you know, pulled up the map and figured out the mileage. And uh, my daughter's house is halfway. So we drove there the first day and then we got to spend the next day with her. And we drove on to Zion and... It was just so fun and spontaneous. As you know, I love planning trips, but we usually we're locked in by airline tickets, return dates, mm. you know, and this way we were just totally flexible and spontaneous. We weren't on anybody else's schedule. And if we found something and r- read about something that was cool, we just looked at the map and said, we're going. Mm-hmm. And we just saw so much more being on the ground than in the air, you know, getting there by car. Because we haven't done a road trip in a while, and it was just fun. We listened to podcasts the whole time or fun music. We talked. I mean, we had, you know, captive audience with my son, so he had to talk to us. And it was fun. You know, he did open up and share and talk, and it was very, very fun. Um, in fact, that's probably one of my fondest memories of a vac- of a recent vacation, even though it wasn't, you know, what we had planned Mm -hmm. it turned out turned out really fun just the whole spontaneous yeah we got to see a gorgeous part of the united states at the same time awesome that's really awesome so yeah and i and i've just enjoyed the outdoors a lot more i am on my porch and like you mindy i have a slow start to the day i get to Mm -hmm. spend it reading and studying and, and i've been doing a lot of praying lately because um One thing that's very different about this summer is we actually have a dear friend that is fighting for his life with uh, COVID-19. He's been in the hospital a month, three weeks in an ICU and on a ventilator. And um, so it's just really kind of put things in perspective for me, you know, that the things I'm sad about are merely disappointments, you Mm -hmm. know, nothing compared um, to what his family is going through. So just start my day off lifting that family up. Um, Mm -hmm. But I enjoy being outdoors and I've discovered um, a new neighborhood that connects to our neighborhood. And there's actually some walking trails and that neighborhood is really high up on a hill and it faces West. So when I walk, I purposely walk around seven 30 or eight and I get to see the sunset every night Mm -hmm. and you can even see the Nashville skyline from there. Oh, wow. Which, you know, we're pretty far out in Brentwood. So That's been kind of cool. We've had food trucks in our neighborhood, and there's this one called the Blue Monkey. Have you heard of it, Marie? Mm Mm-mm. Well, it's it's shaved ice similar to the frostbites that's down in Seaside, if you know, if you're familiar about that. And so we have the app, and we track it down in (laughs) whatever neighborhood it's in. (laughs) And after dinner, we usually go and and get it. The people that own the truck, it's so funny because they know us now, and they know what we order. (laughs) And they thank us for being such loyal customers. Uh-huh. That's awesome. So that's probably something we would have never done had it not been for such boring evenings. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You chase down food trucks. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mindy, what are some of your silver linings? Wow. I have loved Sunday mornings. It's funny because I could go either way on on Sunday mornings. I really miss being in a church community. I miss being with other believers on a Sunday morning. However, the simplicity of Sunday mornings, I think anybody in a large family would agree that sometimes it can be stressful to try to get everybody out of the house. And we're typically sitting in the driveway waiting for one or two people to run out holding a shoe or grabbing Mm -hmm. breakfast or whatever. And The simplicity of Sunday mornings have been really sweet. I have loved the conversations with my family because we've been watching church online together. Then we're able to sit around and talk about the message because we don't go anywhere. Like there's no activity or busyness. So we talk about the message and then we pray for one another. We talk about the things that, you know, we need to praise for and the things we need to pray for. And it's just given us a real intimacy in our home to have church in our home. And so I can't wait to go back to church to be in a body of believers again, but I have really loved the simplicity of my family on Sunday mornings. And we all make breakfast together. We make a big brunch 
And then we have to go be separate because we've had so much togetherness that we really need to be alone then at that point. (laughs) (laughs) So I think, I mean, Sundays have been really sweet movie nights with the family game nights. Um, like Julie, I love to be outside. I can't tell you how many miles we have all walked to be outside. The boys have been riding bikes So just really simple living. And I have loved the no rush of the, of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does some of this remind you of how you grew up? Because it does me. Yes. Um, I didn't go to camps and events. Not, not when I was young. Like I just literally got up in the morning and went outside and had to find my own stuff to do. Yes. And I kind of feel like that's what we're doing again. <laughs> it is. We've had to make the boys get off of Xbox because they would literally be on the Xbox all day long if we let them. But they have been, Nathan is still um, learning the piano and I can't believe how far he's come. Um, he's playing the piano beautifully. And so I love hearing that. They're playing basketball together. We're playing basketball as a family. But yeah, we're trying to get off the Xbox and make them Mm -hmm. have a simple summer away Mm -hmm. from electronics. Yes. (laughs) My girls actually ordered skateboards. That's what they wanted for their birthday. And I love it. I just think like having more time outside and less things that they can go and do. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, man, I hope we don't get a broken wrist or something like that. But hey, it's another outdoor right. activity that I don't feel like they would have picked up if we weren't right. so locked down um, yeah. right. and not able to go and do things. Oh, I Great. love that. Yeah. 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 All right, you guys. So I wanted to just bring this up. It's not a silver lining for sure. It's definitely a negative. But mm-hmm. I wonder if other listeners are running into this too. I feel like I have this underlying worry about how this all is affecting my kids. Like, are they becoming depressed or hopeless or how are they dealing with all the uncertainty? Have you guys, what have you been doing to deal with that worry? I do worry about it. And I try to not, I try to limit maybe my feelings of kind of when I get that feeling of hopelessness or discouragement, I try to really limit that around my youngest son just because he's not really expressed that. But I mean, he's a senior in college. He's at a time when he should be excited about moving forward in the world. And I don't know how much he's going to get to do that right now, you Mm -hmm, know? mm -hmm. Right. So um, I just try to kind of leave that (laughs) out of Mm -hmm. conversation. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. we do talk about the virus a lot and stuff, but not in a super negative way. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Has this been coming up in your house, Mindy? Um, it's, it's, it's on my mind, but I feel like I'm just aware of it. Maybe, um, I've heard of people that are really struggling. Um, I still have a 12 and a 13 year old at home and I've heard that, that kids are really struggling, even at those young ages, that their, their kids are depressed, that they're having a hard time. And so Bryce and I have been very intentional about um, just spending a lot of time with them. You know, their interaction is with us. Mm-hmm. Just trying to be active or ask them questions or just have good interactions with them, having enough downtime together, but also have making them, forcing them to do activities with us because our social interaction is with each other right now. Even if, you know, we don't feel like necessarily doing something, we make sure that we do something together because coming alongside somebody and doing an activity together helps conversation. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you can't just sit down across the table. So how are you doing? How do you feel about that? You know, that's not, that's especially with teenagers. Yeah, no, that's, that's not a healthy interaction. Like that stresses me out if somebody were to do that to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why walking is so good. They, yes. they tend to want to talk more side by side, yes. I think, not face to face. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like Bryce and I will walk, the boys will get on their bikes. And so we just try to, you know, do things with them. And it helps that conversation because I am concerned, you know, everything has changed. My older two kids, they're still moving forward, even though it looks a little different. Mm-hmm. Because I think their lives feel so uncertain normally because of their age. And then so Mm -hmm. to have all of this added on and as adults, it's hard to, I mean, Mm -hmm. we can be there to encourage and support, but we can't really give them answers, you know? No, because we don't know what's going to happen either. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think if we could get the school piece 
something in place for kids. Yeah. (laughs) I think they would probably start to feel a little bit better, even if it was just, we're not going back and you're doing online. I think like all this uncertainty weighs on us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we knew what we were dealing with, that's one thing. Like if, if you just tell me, okay, this is going to happen at this time. Okay. Then I'll deal with that. Like Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll figure out how to, you know, get us to that point and we'll move forward. But yes, I mean, it weighs on me. I know it weighs on Mm -hmm. everybody out there um, to try to figure out how to, well, what am I supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. Like if life is... (laughs) Right, right. Yeah, and I know it's hard. I've talked to a lady yesterday who works full time and has three children in school. And, you know, during the initial lockdown, everybody was home. Well, now she's working, Mm -hmm. but her kids might be home. How Mm -hmm. how is she supposed to manage that? Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's so it's going to be a different set of problems in the fall if parents are working and their kids aren't in school. It's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So we'll just have to be back in that reframing and refiguring. <laughs> but like we said at the beginning of the episode, that can get somewhat exhausting. But this episode is kind of about seeing silver linings. So we had We have heard from quite a few listeners, and I want to read some of their silver linings as encouragement to us and to other listeners. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that we received, some of the responses were people appreciating being more relaxed and having less planning. And I think we can all get behind that. (laughs) Um, Someone wrote in that they love seeing kids able to play and learning to ride bikes. I mean, if you didn't have a bike at the beginning of Corona, you cannot find one now. (laughs) It's true. Bikes are like the hottest thing out there. Uh But yes, it is wonderful to see kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Someone wrote in and said they love having more time with their teenagers. They love having more time gardening and enjoying the outdoors. Someone booked a last minute cabin in Colorado, hiked all weekend long, no TV, no media, refreshing. You guys, doesn't mm. that sound awesome? Sounds wonderful. <laughs> it sounds wonderful. Someone else wrote in, continuing to explore the area we just moved to two years ago. That is really neat. You know, sometimes we right. just settle in to our jobs and our schools and we don't really have time to go out and really explore an area. So this is a great summer to get out there and explore your local state park or, um, you know, local places of interest that you may not have been able to before this. Uh Another person wrote in that they really enjoy the extra time with their teenage kids, especially their senior. And I think we all echo that. You know, it's amazing how much extra time we're getting to spend with kids that would normally have not been around the house that much. And I love that we are having all that extra time. Another listener wrote in, they said, I am hopping in a car tomorrow to drive to Boulder to see my seven-month-old granddaughter and her parents. They don't Mm -hmm. want us on a plane and then coming into their home, so we're renting a car and flying back. Last time I saw her was right before the world stopped, so I'm very excited. (laughs) Oh, that is so sweet. I I love that. that cool? Yes. Yes. Another listener wrote, for the first time ever, I've been able to be a stay-at-home mom to my daughter. Granted, she's 21, but at an age when I would normally see very little of her, I've had the great fortune to have this time with her. Oh, wow. I I I love that. Yes. I know. I mean, it cannot be underestimated the wonderful bonding that families have had. Right. There was a mom at our church that said she was taking all her kids and driving an hour, hour and a half up into Kentucky to go to a restaurant that we don't have here that they had in their hometown. Oh, um, neat. I think near LSU. And this was the closest one. So they were just going to get in the car. You know, who does the, who would have three hours to spend to go to a fast food restaurant? (laughs) But that's what they were going to do because they had the time. I thought that's a really neat, neat way to spend a day. It is is a really neat way. Yeah. That's great. All right. Well, in addition to the Instagram messages we got, we also had some listeners leave us a voicemail by calling us on our number 209 Midlife. So let's listen to those. Hey, girls. This is Cindy from Nashville. I'm a working mom and I have one daughter in college. My number one pandemic silver lining is working from home. I mean, I get to sleep later, wear whatever I want, and I don't have to put on makeup. And I also get to do things on my lunch break that I can't do in the office, like walk the dogs or load the dishwasher or do a load of laundry. I know that sounds weird, but 
Not having to face laundry after that long drive home is a big deal. As a family, we've been playing games, working puzzles, and doing movie nights. We've planted some gardens and renovated a bathroom where my husband has. But um, it's almost like you get to do stuff that has been on your to-do list forever because now you have the time to do it because you can't do anything else. Oh, and podcasts. I have tons of time to listen to cool podcasts like Midlife Matters. See you guys. Bye. Hey, y'all. My name is Molly, and I'm from Texas. Um, this summer, I'm privileged to get to stay home and work. Uh, my office, unfortunately, is still closed, but I am able to work from home and be with my husband and son, which is great. So I am trying to take advantage of more time at home by doing some home projects that don't cost any money. Uh, for instance, doing some cleaning and reorganizing, something where I can freshen up a space without having to buy something new. I'm also trying to take this time to learn how to cook new meals and do fun things in the evenings like make a new meal or have dinner outside on the patio to have fun date nights in. Hi, ladies. This is Janet calling from Arkansas with a pandemic blessing. One of our kids lives a thousand miles away, and we've had mostly a text relationship with him. Thanks to quarantine, however, we started doing family Zoom calls, so I get to see his face, plus he gets to see his sister. (laughs) We've gone from rarely talking to two-hour-long video calls, and that's been wonderful for our family during this um, coronavirus time. Hey, this is Jennifer from Tampa, and I just wanted to say that we have really loved this time together as a family during the pandemic. We have one teenager and one preteen, and, you know, they're getting um, very uh, social and want to spend a lot of time with friends, and so we've loved kind of the forced time of everyone needing to be nearby and close, and we've played a lot more games than we normally do. We've taught our kids rummy. We have read way more books than we normally would and um, have been watching different movies, throwback movies together as a family. We've also really appreciated and enjoyed how it's thrown off our summer plans. Normally, we have certain things that we do every summer, um, a certain camp we go to in a different state and a certain vacation we take every summer. And, you know, our weeks are us- are often during the summer tied up with different things. And this has given us this complete 12-week break of a summer with nothing else on the calendar since everything's been canceled. And we took a three-week-long road trip, um, and it was completely spontaneous. We drove to the other side of the country Um, in a one-way RV rental, and that was incredible. We would have never otherwise been able to do that. So while we know um, this pandemic has affected people so differently and some people are not in a great position because of it, we are um, just being as grateful as we possibly can for this time and what it's allowed for us and the time that we've um, had with our kids. especially as we're heading into some busy social years with them. So just wanted to share. Thanks for all you guys do. We love your podcast. Bye-bye. Hi there. This is Cheryl from Tennessee. I have three kids. Two boys are married and out of my house and a girl starting her senior year of college. So with my kids grown and not needing me much, I've had fun reading, cleaning out closets, painting, and walking. Another fun thing that I have loved doing is giving our bedroom a refresh with new paint, bedspread, lamps, and nightstands, all from thrift stores and Facebook Marketplace because I've had limited access to stores, and I wouldn't have had so much fun hunting for bargains if we hadn't been in quarantine. Hi, ladies. This is Francie. I just really enjoy your podcast so much. Thank you for putting it together and um, for presenting such great topics. Uh, I recently turned 40, so it's just really fun for me to learn from you guys. I'm so Glad I discovered your podcast. Um, I wanted to share a few just silver linings to our summer, um, having to deal with COVID and everything, which obviously makes it different than normal for us. The first thing I was thinking is that I decided to go off of social media 
which um, I really love social media, but I decided to take a break this summer. And that has given me more time to focus on my kids and just clear my brain space so that I have just more time to plan and think and uh, dream. Anyways, it's just been really good for me. Another thing is that my husband and I um, had an anniversary recently, and instead of going out of town, we decided to do a staycation. And we stayed in a local hotel, and we explored an area of town that we're not very familiar with. And so we got to research restaurants and different things. Obviously, we wore, we wore masks, so that was a little bit different. But it was a really fun time, and we just had a great time of connection. Um, another thing I've really appreciated is on Sunday mornings, my family has been able to take really long walks together. I have two boys, grade school age boys, and um, typically our Sunday mornings are you know, busy getting ready for church. And sometimes my husband and I serve on Sunday morning, so we have to leave early. But during the COVID-19 outbreak time, we've been able to just spend family time and just take really long walks around our neighborhood. And it's just been a really sweet time for us. I think one other thing that's been good is that we've had family visiting from out of town uh, that we just don't typically get to see much. Uh, They live in Brooklyn. And so since so many things were shut down in New York. They were able to come and um, just enjoy, enjoy the outdoors a little more. And uh, we, we've we loved getting to spend lots of extra time with them when typically we wouldn't have had the chance. Thank you for, for just sharing and, and taking a positive turn on things with the coronavirus. I know it can just really get people down. And so thank you for talking about it and just trying to share the positive things. I love what you guys do. Keep going. I'm just so excited to, to listen to the, your next episode. Oh, wow. I love hearing all those wonderful <laughs> things that people have gotten to experience and do. And it just, that's so encouraging. Yes. To hear that people are finding the silver linings in a really difficult time. Mm-hmm. Yes. I just love hearing, and I am so encouraged by how other people are making the most of this summer. It really makes me want to be like remotivated, sit down, <laughs> make out a bucket list that I can complete, <laughs> ask people what we can still do, because we really do have at least half the summer left. Yes, <laughs> I know. I, I was thinking like what moms out there want to go on a vacation all by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of moms that want to, but we won't get like, to. <laughs> there's a lot of togetherness happening right now, which is so, so sweet. But I'm just thinking like, how you know, what are you doing to like steal away or recharge? You know, how are those how are people recharging? Because it's difficult right now. Like to be able to appreciate the togetherness, you have to have times where you're not. Right, right. I haven't landed on that answer, Mindy, but (laughs) I'm totally, listeners, if you have some advice for us, either message us on Instagram or leave us a voicemail by calling us at 209 Midlife and we'll be happy to play it for everyone. (laughs) All right, Julia, Mindy, what will make this summer a success for you in your family? I think for me, I just want to be able to look back on the summer and have found that I was content with it and not to rate it based on maybe how much I accomplished or the places I've been, like how maybe I would have rated past summers, Mm -hmm. you know, by what we got done, the places we've been, the things we did. I'm kind of just trying to accept the isolation, the quietness of it all And like I said earlier, I think it just reminds me of my own childhood, how I just had to kind of make my own fun and using my imagination. And I've really liked not having to rush to finish things. I I just want to take my time with things and do a good job. Like I've had this project out on my dining room table for weeks. Normally, I'd have to clear that off because people were coming over to eat at that dining room table. Mm -hmm. Now right. I can just leave it there, you know, and I know that I, when I start things, I don't have to be so focused on the finish, mm-hmm. but not that I don't want to finish, but I want to have enjoyed the process of things that I'm doing right? You know, to be present in the now and not always thinking about something later. Yeah. How about you, Mindy? Uh, well, the first thing that came to mind when I th- thought, you know, how would I see this as successful is, um, I've been listening to a lot of um, Tim Keller podcasts, The Gospel in Life. And one of the things he says just resonated a lot with me. It's basically how you approach life, like so much of what happens to you is what you tell yourself about the situation. 
Mm. And so each day as I'm journaling, as I'm writing down my praises first, before I write down the things that I'm praying about is really trying to be intentional with looking at my life, with looking at the things that happen and saying, you know, what am I telling myself about that situation? What am I telling myself about today that I need to change or what's good about it? Can I look at it in a different light? And along with that, I want to end the summer with my kids being able to see God more practically. I want them to have the experience of experiencing God in their lives, in their young lives. I know that my older two kids are really making their faith their own, and I see them doing that. I see them taking steps on their own. I want my younger kids to have that. I want them to see God move, work, and that he is practical for everyday living. And I also want school to start back up in the fall. (laughs) (laughs) The real necessity for success. (laughs) Those are my honest answers right there. (laughs) I know. I mean, a successful summer for me. Okay, so when we first started opening back up in Tennessee at the beginning of May, I kind of felt a little sad because as much as we didn't like being locked down, then we did sort of start to get used to it and sort of like it. And so I know that I had that kind of feeling like of, oh, did I appreciate that time enough? And I guess a successful summer this summer would be when I get to the end of it. Can I say I appreciated it enough? Because it is a gift to have this extra time with my three teenagers. I'll have a senior in the fall and two juniors. And, you know, they are going to be gone before I know it. And so even though like in the dailiness, they might be fighting or telling me how bored they are or, um, you know, not want to do this thing that we have planned. As a whole, we are experiencing a lot of great conversations and time together, and I want to savor that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also want school to start back in the fall, too, Mindy. (laughs) (laughs) If only so that I can get rid of this worry that sits on my shoulder. Like, I can't educate them. I cannot educate two juniors and a senior. I need them to be well-educated. Right. And so I need some kind of good education plan, even if it happens to be at home. Just please, schools, come up with some good way to educate these kids. Yes, I agree. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, let's move to our I'm a fan. All right, Julie, what are you a fan of this week? I am a fan of something from Trader Joe's again, um, and it is called Sparkling Watermelon Juice. Oh, that sounds delicious. Oh, yeah. You're showing us a little green can with a watermelon on it. Yum. Yes. And I just love the description. It says, instructions for enjoyment. Sip. Ah, repeat. (laughs) And it said, it's the sweet sparkling beverage of your warm weather dreams. Oh, and is it, Julie? (laughs) Do you love it? It is. It's very good. And it does have 60 calories. It's not a water. It's a juice. Okay. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it's really yummy. Refreshing. That's awesome. Wow. Even the description just sounds lovely. I know it does. (laughs) I am definitely going to have to check that out. All right, Mindy. All right. Well, it's been a long time since I've been able to talk about anything to do with hair or makeup or clothing or fashion. (laughs) And I just thought it was time that I share my favorite eyebrow pencil. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Target Walmart. It is the Elf Instant Lift Brow Pencil. Oh, It's literally $2. Really? It is my favorite. My favorite eyebrow pencil just ran out when we were at the beach. And I thought, oh, I hate going down to Ulta. Maybe I could just get Elf when I go to the grocery store. (laughs) I love my Elf pencil and it is so cheap. So, um, I, we can post a link from Amazon, but um, I've been using this e.l.f. pencil for probably two, three years. Okay. They even have it at Old Navy when you're checking out. Oh, wow. Right oh, okay. Like, there's, there's no excuse not to have one with you at all times. <laughs> no excuse. It is so cheap, so easy. I love it. Well, I am a fan of something that my son and I started watching on Netflix 
I had actually heard a podcast on this a couple of years ago. You guys remember the Central Park jogger in New York City, yeah. you know, who had been attacked. And um, five teens from Harlem were accused and convicted of that crime. But years later, one of the boys who had gone to prison met the guy in prison who actually did commit the rape. And the guy felt bad that someone else was serving his time. So he admitted to it and they tested the DNA and he was the perpetrator. So the convictions of these five teens were vacated and they were let go. And um, so I had heard the podcast. I knew the facts. But for about a year now, there's been a show on it on Netflix called When They See Us. And every single time it would be suggested, I would be like, I should watch that. But I don't know. Like, I find real stories like that just kind of depressing. Like I, I love right. a good like story like that if it's fictionalized, but for some reason I thought, oh man, I'm going to feel so bad. And I do feel mm-hmm. so bad, but it's so good. And I just okay. thought, you know, in the times that we're living right now, this would be a great one to sit down and watch with my son. And it is just so eye opening. You know, this took place in the 90s. And so here we are 30 years later. And it really shows kind of our evolution towards racial things as a society. And still that we still have work to do. But I, I just recommend it to anyone. I mean, when they see it on Netflix, it's mm-hmm. so powerful. It's so well done. Your heart bleeds for these boys. Like you are, I can only watch like 45 minutes at a time. It's four parts just because my heart feels so bad. Yeah. But I think we all really need to see it when they see us. Um, check that out okay. on Netflix. All right. Wow. Yeah. So, guys, thanks so much for getting together today and talking about the silver linings. I know that I feel like I'm going to be able to make it the next six to eight weeks. <laughs> It's been encouraging, especially hearing everybody else, the things that they're appreciating. It is it is encouraging to hear. Yes. And thank you, listeners, everybody that wrote into us and called us. We love hearing from you. It's so mm-hmm. encouraging to hear what other people are doing. Absolutely. Yeah, I loved hearing from our listeners. Yes. All right, Julie and Mindy, we'll talk to you next week. Sounds right. great. Bye. Bye. Right. Bye. We're so happy you joined us today. You can find the show notes for this episode at midlifematterspodcast.com. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Midlife Matters Podcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.